It's the last NHL game before Christmas, so you know what that means. It's that it had to be a one-goal game because, of course, the NHL rigs all of their games, so this one had to be close for entertainment factor. Let's go! Yeah! Bro! He did it! Oh, we're on a freaking power play! Why are we not shooting? Yeah, I swear to God! I can't even grammar properly right now. How frustrated I am. Many people, including Steve Dangle, back in May, predicted Tampa and Vegas to be the final two teams remaining. However, I'm pretty sure they did not mean like this. The NHL is having a pause up until Christmas break, the, giving the players an opportunity to rest, not go crazy, not get COVID, spend time with their families, hopefully. And so the last two teams remaining out of like the bunch of games that were supposed to happen today was the Tampa and Vegas game. And it was quite entertaining, despite the fact that the Vegas Golden Knights lose <laughs> Four to three against the Tampa Bay Lightning. I was in the theater watching Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> Definitely watched that. Highly recommend, highly recommend. Not the point. First of all, in the first period, I swear the Vegas Golden Knights allow more first career NHL goals than any other team. I mean, that could just be my bias because I'm only watching all of these ones, but I swear it's at least several every year where the Golden Knights are allowing this kid. Uh, in this case, I, oh boy, I'm going to butcher his name. Off an offense, well, I guess our defensive zone turnover, Fortier buries it past uh, Brassois to make it to one nothing Lightning. He scores his first career NHL goal, and that's fantastic super happy for him but also it's like seriously <laughs> we had several of those ourselves this year with uh, Cotter, Lecision, and Romberg but I mean it's just in. so I didn't see any of the first period but it was uh back and forth between the first NHL goal and then Mark Stone power play goal it was kind of a redirect with his foot but no kicking motion <laughs> and I think that's why they play soccer in the warm-ups, maybe? I don't know, who knows? And the only other stat that I really remember from this first period, because I didn't watch any of it, but looking at the stats after, shots were 17 to five in favor of Vegas. What? That doesn't happen! Vegas does not play well in the very beginning of the game or they get the first goal and then completely shut down for the rest of it. They had 17 shots in the first period. Are you kidding me? And only one went in and that's because of Vasilevsky who is just on a complete another level. He's six foot five, but I'm pretty sure his feet end to end when he goes into the full on splits is also six foot five because nothing gets past the goal because he covers the entire thing. Very similar to what I had said last video about Shea Theodore having a power play goal, where I was more excited that it was a Shea Theodore goal than a power play one. Same exact scenario here, Mark Stone. I'm more excited that it was a Mark Stone goal than it was a power play goal because he hasn't been able to have as many goals as we're accustomed to, and that could be because he's been injured for more than half the season. But it was really, really nice to see him get a goal. And honestly, the fact that our power play over the last, what, five six games is almost at a 40 it's at a 45 percent I think I saw the statistic as that's insane it does not look like it should be at 45 percent but a lot of those goals were just those rebound pickup goals right in front of the net that's what the Mark Stone it was kind of a <laughs> redirect with his foot but those types of goals we haven't been getting until recently and so that's been really really fresh this second period Oh my goodness. <laughs> very, very beginning, Mark Stone gets a second of the night because of a beautiful feed from Chandler Stevenson. I don't know what the Lightning defenders thought. They, he was gonna either go all the way around the crease, but it, like he had some space, so he dished it back into the slot and Mark Stone's completely wide open, beats Vassie to make it two to one Vegas. <laughs> and then Nick Waugh thinks he's Connor McDavid here and makes it three to one. He absolutely walked. Victor Hedman, Victor Hedman, and this shot beats Vasilevsky. Any, uh, I, I get that it's against the Tampa Bay Lightning and this can't be done every single time that anybody plays them, but literally they are so good. And the fact that he was able to um, do this fantastic, oh, smooth as silk handwork with the puck and just able to cause Victor Hedman to fall over and Vassie to not be able to get this puck. It was incredible, this move, to make it a 3-1 game. I said it in the very beginning of the second, but I didn't realize that Peter Edward Belmar uh, played for the Lightning now. I um, thought he was, I don't know where he was at. I knew he wasn't with Colorado anymore, but he uh, has been known that ever since he's played for our team to <laughs> be on the score sheet. And of course, 
He makes it three to two with the lightning. Uh, beautiful play in front. It was just a good wrister that beats Brassois and makes it three to two. And of course it was Belmar. There's no such thing as breathing room with a lightning. They make it three to three, just like that. Goals in, I think it was third, 43 seconds apart. Uh, this one, a backhand from Sorelli that went beaten Brassois, and it's 3-3 going into the third in a game where the Golden Knights uh, like very, very much played better than the Lightning in the second period. I don't like it. It should not have been a tie game. Vegas should have been ahead going into the third, and it would have been very important for that because beautiful puck movement in their power play about halfway through the third, and it leads to an absolute like so beautiful you would cry a slap shot one-timer from uh, Stamkos who's in Ovi's office slightly different styles but really 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 good goal scorer in Stamkos gives the lightning the 4-3 lead and uh, it was it was it was uh, such a beautiful shot and I was so frustrated with it it doesn't help that in this late in the second period, Mark Stone skated for 15 seconds, kind of looked weird, and then went down the tunnel, and we didn't see him the rest of the game. No idea what happened to him there. He was out the previous game because of an upper body injury, and I don't know what was happening here. It didn't really seem like anything much on the last shift that he had before that 15 second one, but um, really, really scary to have him gone again. Uh, for the third time this season, and hopefully he's able to have a good recovery. He's fine. It was just precautionary or whatnot. And a lot of really good chances at the end from Vegas, but they're not able to get one past Vassy. So unbelievably good. Uh, we had 41 shots in total. We saved 38 of them. That's fantastic numbers. It, it really, really stings that we didn't get a point from this one because of how much we outplayed the Lightning, but sometimes that's how it goes. And so we lose this one four to three. Other thoughts from this game, the fourth line continued to be very effective. Honestly, they had a really couple of good shifts in the second period where Amadio, uh, Howden, and Carrier are able to get really good opportunities, but it's Vasilevsky in net. And so nothing able to get past him. Um, and it's really, really cool to see them be offensively proficient. An offensively proficient fourth line? What's that? This, apparently. Whatever they're doing, it's working, and that's fantastic. Anyways, it's going to be it for Game 32's Nightly Review. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night and a Merry Christmas.